Now let's return to that breaking news. It's been announced that the government will shut down the Bibby Stockholm barge used for housing migrants off the south coast of England. This is all as part of its overhaul of the asylum system. So we're again joined in the studio by our Home and Security Editor, Mark White, to talk us through this all. So yes, the breaking line is that the Bibby Stockholm barge will no longer be used to house migrants. What happens next? I think, you know, this is a very significant development because we've got to set it, you know, in the context of what this government is doing, which is slowly but surely dismantling all of the apparatus that the previous government had in place to deal with the channel migrant crisis, the use of hotels, the use of the Bibby Stockholm or indeed RAF Scampton and Wethersfield in Essex. And this is the, the first significant move in that direction with the confidence information that that barge, the Bibby Stockholm, that's anchored down at uh, Portland Harbour in Dorset, will cease to operate from January of next year. The contract that the previous government signed takes us up to January 2025. So from that point on, uh, then it'll be cleared out. There's about 400 asylum seekers being held on the barge at the moment. And what we understand as well, although it's not been uh, announced as yet, uh, is that those bases at uh, Scampton and Lincolnshire, uh, Wethersfield, the former RAF and US air base down in Wethersfield, which is housing about 600 mm -hmm. asylum seekers, will be next in line. OK, so we know that the new Labour government doesn't want to use the Bibby Stockholm barge to house migrants, maybe not these RAF bases as well, and they also want to clear the hotels. So I guess the big question that everyone wants to know the answer to is where are they all going to go? This is the big emerging theme that I think people need to be aware of, of what the new government intends to do is to rapidly clear the asylum backlog. And by that we mean consider the asylum applications, those that they feel uh, deserve asylum get it, those that don't, if they can be returned to their home country, they will. But we know that the majority of people coming across on the small boats are coming from countries where it's very difficult or impossible to return. Countries like Iran or Afghanistan or Syria. Um, so I think, let me just read you a quote uh, from the new uh, border security and asylum minister, Dame Angela Eagle. Remember her? Yes. Angela Eagle. What's, what's Pre the leadership candidate? Yeah. Ooh, previous, previous Labour government, well, she's uh, now taken up that particular post. And I think this kind of makes it clear the direction of travel that the Labour government appears to want to go on re-asylum. Uh, she's saying with respond, in response to the decision on the baby Stockholm, we are determined to restore order to the asylum system so that it operates swiftly, firmly and fairly and ensures the rules are properly enforced. The Home Secretary has set out plans to start clearing the asylum backlog and making savings on accommodation, uh, which is running up vast bills for the taxpayer. Now, there is no doubt it is costing an absolute arm and leg to, to keep asylum seekers, uh, not just in hotel accommodation, but other related accommodation and the support costs. Over the next few years, it's estimated at something between 30 and 40 billion pounds. That's double the Ooh. budget for the police service in England and Wales. So you can understand the, what Sorry, this double, government would say. Double the police budget of yeah. England, oh, wow. Yeah. It's a lot of money. That's all of the wraparound care that's required to accommodate asylum seekers, not just in hotels, but of course absorbed into the, the sort of local authority structure as well, where it becomes a responsibility of councils to accommodate these people um, in council, local authority accommodation and, and, you know, social services accommodation. And yet what the Labour Party will be doing here is potentially a sugar rush. Clearing this backlog by granting asylum to uh, many, many tens of thousands of people, perhaps over 100,000 people granted asylum in very, very short order. Then what happens as the second stage? Yes, OK, hotels cleared, Bibby Stockholm cleared, RAF Scampton never operational. But what happens to then the sign that it, this country effectively puts out into the sky? Anyone coming from Iran... Anyone 
coming from Afghanistan, countries that we find it very hard to send people back to, if not impossible to send people back to, it's saying, if you can get here in a small boat, you will be guaranteed asylum. That's millions of people. Yeah. And this is what I'm seeing in terms of, you know, people, I think, need to be clear headed about the direction of travel that this new government is going in with regards to dealing with the asylum backlog more quickly and ensuring that those that are granted asylum are granted asylum, those uh, that can be removed are removed and many that cannot be removed are still effectively allowed to remain here either in, you know, temporary temporary uh, leave to remain or indefinite leave to remain. Many, many people will be allowed to stay in the country. And the message that sends then, according to the critics of this scheme from the government, will be that it's open season for the UK. Come across the channel because you will get leave to remain at some point in the UK, actually a lot quicker than you would have under the Conservative government. And that is the concern that many critics of this new Labour policy will have, that it's just going to act as a massive pull factor yeah. for many more people to make that dangerous crossing. And we're already number one or number two in you know, the top destinations for illegal migrants within the EU. I was yeah, seeing some new statistics from the... It, it was a survey that was looking at... The you know, the, the, of the million and a half or whatever that came across Europe's border uh, in the last year, the, the top destinations that these people wanted to get to were Germany and the UK. It's fascinating, and I can see that in the short term, in the short term, politically, what we'll see is the Home Secretary going from hotel to hotel, closing it down, marking up as this big win. Look, we're getting rid of the migrant we're hotels. Saving we're, we're saving all of this money. We're closing down the Bibby Stockholm. And I think a lot of people in local communities that have seen hotels be requisitioned will say, that's wonderful. Hooray. Look, we've solved migration. But all it will do is look into the longer term. And what it is, it is looking at numbers that already people think are too high across the country as a whole. Those numbers will go up and up and up. It's just we won't call them illegal, we'll call them legal. Yeah, and as, as much as, you know, it is a net benefit to a community, especially smaller communities, to get the use of their hotel back and not to see 100 or 200 young male asylum seekers hanging about outside hotels, that, of course, will be welcomed by many communities right up and down the country. There's the other effect of that is that these people have to be absorbed then into local authorities uh, care right across the country. And what does that mean? That means the likes of social housing, your council houses, other social housing uh, will go probably top of the list to asylum seekers rather than people from the local population who might be desperate for that accommodation themselves. All kinds of other wraparound services will then be required and, and to the sustain these people are too. are entitled to council housing in a way that economic migrants aren't. That well, yes, indeed, that is often the way that uh, count, um, local authorities will operate is that they have an imperative uh, to immediately house people who are coming who are not just in need of a better house, an upgrade on a house or struggling to pay the rent on this. They have no accommodation and they are being uh, imported into that area by the, the UK government. They then have to be... Uh, put into accommodation mm. as a priority, otherwise they're on the streets. And we know how many tensions there are in some local communities over social housing as it is. Of course. Um, but Mark, thank you very much. It's such a privilege to have you here to sort of break down this stuff for us, um, because it is complicated and there's a lot of spin when it comes to migration yeah. statistics and what exactly is actually going on with government policy. So thank you.